Welcome to a special CK podcast, an emergency CK podcast here on the Basketball Zone Cowbell Kingdom YouTube channel. I'm your host, Leo Beas, and I got my co-host, Vince Miracle, with me to break it all down. We just heard Monty McNair's con- comments uh, from his press conference that aired roughly about 3.15-ish. We'll play some of those clips right now, break some stuff down, some good questions asked, finally. Um, and yeah, he, he's, I don't know what to think of him right now because this should have happened before the season in the summer. He is more like this guy needs to be held accountable. And I said that from the very get go, like you had a chance to get rid of him, whether the ownership wanted or not, that's not my problem. Like if I'm gonna come in take a job, you, you need to do your thing and like have all all ownership behind you and bring in your people. Again, the Kings always doing things backwards, hiring a coach before the GM. And then, you know, it's it's just a ripple effect, not how you run an NBA organization. We talked about culture on the last post game, uh, Raptors King with Robert and then Vince showing that as well. But man, Vince, how you feeling? Are you glad this happened or are you in my boat where it's like, well, it's the same coaching staff. How much more can actually change, right? Right. I mean, I think, I mean, I mean, it, it definitely needed to happen. Right. It was one of those things where everyone was calling for it. it. It was so bad to where the last two games, you heard nothing but fire Luke chants loud and proud in the Golden One Center. And I think seeing that throw up from that fan on the court Oof. yesterday was really just a symbol. I wasn't there, King but oh season. my God. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the video. I shared it. I'm one of those mean people that shared it. Whoever wanted to see, you know what I mean. But yeah, man, it was a. Uh, it w- this was something that needed to be, needed to happen during the off season because now, and I, and I tweeted this immediately when I when I saw the news. It's very unfortunate that you're making this decision 17 games into the season when you had an off season where many believed that Luke Walton should have already been on the hot seat. The offense was very one-dimensional, and it's continuing to be that as of right now as well. We thought that was going to be the move, right? That was going to be the decision where you let him go. But no, Monty comes out and says, this is our guy. And I'm I'm glad that this was put on him was you came out and stated that this was our guy. That's why whenever I was asked or whenever it was talked about fire Luke, I said, Monty came out and said, this is his. I didn't expect him to get fired, but. The way the Kings have been playing, it has been poor. It doesn't surprise me, but I don't know if moving to Gentry shows any difference, whether it's the way the offense is going to be played, uh, expecting different types of rotations, more Bagley, more this, more that. I don't know if you're going to see much of a difference. I mean, you you know this just as much as I do, Leo. Teams don't get to practice during the regular season. Right. They're, they're, they're going to keep doing the same exact thing that they've been doing. So I don't know if Gentry moves it in any way. I mean, I, I'll give him credit to the fact that he and Luke were a part of that Golden State Warriors playoff run. Right. He has history of being a head coach, especially with the Pelicans most recently, I believe. So I'll give him credit there. But if you look back in, the, in his stints there, people were complaining about the offense and his rotations. <laughs> and that's the problem that they're having now in Sacramento. There isn't a head coach on this roster. I have said that for years now. Gentry is a very good lead assistant. Lu Guan is a good assistant coach. I I will never say he's a bad basketball coach because he's a basketball mind. I'd be ridiculous and blasphemous on so many levels. But when you become a head coach in the NBA, and again, you don't know if you'll be a good head coach until you become a head coach. And obviously, Luke has had all the opportunities in the world to fail or succeed, both in L.A. and in Sacramento. And then there's a lot of speculation of whether Vladi interviewed anybody or he was given the job. So that's neither here nor there. It happened. He had a chance. Clean slate with Monty McNair. Is this like his gel-free card for, for Monty, or are you keeping him accountable? No, I think he's definitely – you have to put it on his shoulders. This is something where Facts. you came out and you said, this is my guy. This We're riding with him. So you can't you can't just say Monty's doing a great job and not talk about the, the thing that he has made a mistake on, which is delaying this process because it's been well known that 
every off season with Luke is, is he on the hot seat? Is he on the hot seat? And he's always been on the hot seat. The offense never changed. He it was so indecisive too on what they were going to be. It preached pace, preached pace the entire time. They're they eighth, want to move fast. They're eighth on pace, uh, and they're they're eighth in the, on NBA.com. They're seventh on ESPN.com. Vince, please tell the people like when you have a point guard like Darren Fox, you got to run, run, run. Be top three, no excuses. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, look what they were doing last year. They were starting to win games, even that the season during the bubble. They were starting to win games because they were making other teams exhausted with the pace that they were playing at. Was it sloppy at times? Of course it was. It's a, it's a young team. It's I don't even know if it'd be really much more effective. <coughs> Excuse me, talking no water. I don't know if it'd be much more effective with the Kings playing faster. But they're all, they're only what fifteenth. In offensive efficiency, and the only reason, and the only reason why I still think they're there is because their turnover numbers, while they're low, their turnovers are, are in the most horrible times of the games. So their offensive efficiency, while it is in the top fifteen, I still see it as a bottom tier offense. It's it's so one dimensional, and yeah, they they limit their turnovers, which keeps them in that top fifteen. But they're they're a bottom echelon team. I'd rather see a, a, if you're going to be this mid tier offense. You have a Lamborghini as a point guard. You have De'Aaron Fox, who all coaches have rated as the fastest point guard from one end to the other on the court. And, and you keep making him run these horrible half-court sets. Push the ball. Here's one thing, though, Leo. I don't think the Kings need to keep taking all of these three-pointers anymore. I'm off the three-point bandwagon. The only person that's allowed to shoot the three-ball on this team is Buddy Heald. Everyone else better be, and, and maybe even Harrison Barnes, everybody else has to be wide open. These shots, these they're taking way too many three pointers when there's truly only one real shooter on this team. You, run something different. Set back screens. Start setting some slashes. Start making some off ball movements because the offense that is being ran right now is horrible. And if you're just gonna keep hoping for a Buddy to bail you out three or a Harrison Barnes to bail you out drive to the basket or one on one with Fox only being able to move downhill. Right. Those aren't going to work for me. So I understand the firing. It's just it, 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 it's, it came at the it's worst time, time to, to me. Start. Yeah, I mean, it, like you said, man, it's they're they're six and eleven. You're seventeen games in now. Now, not only are you on a three game losing skid, but you're going to have to now learn something different during this three game losing skid. Skid. And the next five games don't get any easier. You got Phoenix twice. You got Philadelphia tomorrow. I, I, I can't even remember the other team, but still, I mean, just those three three names alone, that, that's a rough – I mean, the Kings could be looking at a very rough season right here if they can't start turning things around. Best impact says Gentry offense to score points, but that type of uh, that type of offense leads to bad defense. And talking about defense last year – the Kings were 30th, right? One of the worst defenses in NBA history this year. If anybody can guess, I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. They are 26th in defensive rating, 29th in defensive rebounding, and 26th in total rebounding. Last year, 26th in total rebounding and 29th in defensive rebounding. So lots of similarities to a roster that, quote-unquote, improved defensively and yes they've shown better signs this year without question especially with the dog like Davion Mitchell but their leader De'Aaron Fox hasn't been as engaged as maybe he was in the first five games right that's fair to say I think that's honest constructive criticism in my opinion has he been as bad as everyone has made it to be no because he's still putting up again some say empty calories, but at the end of the day, a lot of players wish they can average 20 and 6. So is it a bad year for him? Absolutely. But is it is it as bad as everybody has made it to be? No, it's not. And a lot of it is because of all the pressure and all the frustration of 15 plus years of not making the playoffs, potentially <laughs> making this 16 years the longest ever in NBA history. So I understand the Kings fan, but you got to understand how to channel those emotions. But one thing that I want to talk about really, man, is the Duck Christie rumor or the tweets from Woj and anyone else, really, 
that he was a true candidate for the interim position, the guy that went from TV just last year to uh, development coach this year, or assistant coach. I don't know what his exact title is, but that would have been the worst thing possible from an optics perspective because he hasn't paid his, his dues, right, as, as a head coach in this league with – for 15 games of coaching experience as an assistant, just optically that would have been bad. And for, and for his own sake, that would have been bad because I wouldn't want to start with this roster first and foremost. So I think that was the best thing for him to not really get this chance because I could have really tarnished his, his image as a potential head coach later in this league uh, when he gets more experience. Now, I haven't spoken to him. I don't know if he wanted that job uh, or, or this team to take on that responsibility being, what, 6-11. and 11? Like, maybe he did want it just because who's going to offer him that type of position? Like, I don't know that. But optically speaking, for his best sake, and because I like him and a lot of Kings fans like him, he could have ended up just like another Vlade Divots, right? I mean, I don't know. He would have had a bail. It would have given him an opportunity to learn. It's just to see if I would have saw him get that opportunity. And this is no, you know, hit on Doug. It's just I think a guy like Bobby Jackson would need it above him. Right. You know what I mean? A guy who correct. That's summer that's my point. Chip, who's been on on the bench already for multiple years and is now the coach of your G League team. I would I would have considered him first, but you know I, that 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 stuff was just more. It would have been just more Kangs. I feel like it was just more more logs that they were thrown into a, a, a burning dumpster fire right now that is the kings um but you know the thing for me that and, and i believe you and robert talked about it at the end of the game just the other day that raptors game which and this comes out of from the sacramento bees jason anderson where he it, they he has a source referring to the owner vivek ronan vivek ronadive as the forever chaos agent Jeez. for this franchise and it's Look, man, it comes from the top down. I really believe that. You brought it up right right in your opening statement about this. Even if Vivek is against you, Monty, and, and Luke wasn't your guy, it was time to make a decision on your own. But look, I'm the opposite of that, where I don't believe as someone that's in the position where Monty is, where this is really his opportunity to be a GM, he can't really go against the owner or you he knows if he hires this new coach he's going to be canned so he knows he's on the hot seat but i feel like ronda diva has shown to be very uh gun ha- easily uh, influenced he, yes yes he he is just he thinks that results happen in a day you know he's a, he came from that warriors era where you got nothing but steph clay you were hitting on draft picks unfortunately the last couple of draft picks have been good, but they haven't been a home run like a Steph Curry. We don't really know that yet about Davion or Tyrese, but I mean, like, it hasn't been there. Bagley was your number two pick. Hasn't turned out to be the way you wanted it to be. So you can't be so uh, irrational about what's happening with your franchise and hoping for things to change when, again, it starts from the top down. He's so reactionary to anything that's going on. He definitely listens to the fans, but... Man, it's just tough, and and I, I if you read that whole entire article from Jason Anderson from the Sack B, it's it's really good. It's very interesting to hear that type of point right. of view and to have a source close to Ron Adive come out and say like, this, this is the chaos agent. It makes sense why it comes from the top down. All right, let's take a look at Monty's comments before we do. Though, shout out to Valley Tire Center for always sponsoring the Cowboy Kingdom platform and obviously Medici Sacramento as well. Great pizza, great service, great family business there. Make sure you guys support them. They're across the Golden One Center. Whenever you go to a game, make sure you stop there first and tell them that Cowboy Kingdom sent you guys. You won't regret it. Best pizza in town. Let's take a look at what Monty had to say in his opening statements. Their actions on the court. Yeah, I think we, we uh, at the beginning of the year, we were 5-4. and four. We, we thought we could be even better with how we had played. We didn't finish a few games there. Um, the last eight games have, have not been that. And, um, you know, that prompted the change. And I think we have the, the talent um, we've shown that we can to do that. And uh, so we're going to get back to that. And, and uh, Alvin's going to be the guy to lead us there. Wow. 
on the island. Actually, I have two questions. The first question, um, has there been any agreements from uh, I don't... any players uh, about the, uh, the coaching that has taken place in the last uh, 17, 18 games that you can share with us? Yeah, look, I think we all know all of us have to be better. Um, what, um, especially over the last two weeks, over these last eight games, is not not meeting expectations. Um, and that's not just on Luke. That's on me. Uh, that's on Thank the you. rest of our coaches and players. Thank and you. Everybody acknowledges that. And so our focus now, starting tomorrow, is to get back on track. Some of the things that we have shown early on in the season, um, and it's on all of us to get there. And then virtual spread, uh, considering how you know the season ended last, considering our things ended, you know, last season, and everybody with the expectation of you know, starting over this season, um, what, what, was, what went into your decision to keep going into this campaign? Yeah, I think um, I addressed that at the end of last year, our decision at the time. Um, and then my job is coming into this season to uh, continue to evaluate and, um, you know, did that after last night's game. And, and this was the decision to be, to be made. <laughs> what? That, that, that is that, ridiculous. That, that right that's there, ridiculous. I mean, that's just he, it, that right there is just someone that says, I, I can't explain it. I, I roll with my guys. Lack of leadership. Um, yeah, I think for us. Like you said, the the five five and four five and five start. Um, we again, I thought we could have been even better. We had a few games that, that we let slip. Um, you know, what we've seen over the last eight nine games is is not Kings basketball. Um, my job is to f put us in position as we've stated our goal is to make the playoffs. And until we get there, we're gonna do everything we can um, to make the team better to to put ourselves in a position to to get back there. And, um, you know, so to me, it was, it was not any one thing. It was, it was, um, I don't know if it's just know, mine, really but it's a, a evaluation of everything of, of where we've been and where we're at. And kind of following up on that, you know, continuity had been kind of a big topic over the off season coming to training camp, all that, um, in going from Luke to, to Alvin, do you keep some of that obviously since he's been here or do you obviously see some, some changes there as well? Yeah, I think Alvin, um, you know, certainly in the rest of our coaching staff, there, there will be some continuity, but also uh, Alvin's done a, a great job at, at many different spots. Um, I think Alvin's seen a lot of things. He has a wealth of experience, and uh, I think Alvin will will put his stamp on things. But, um, again, we, we've shown we can do this. Alvin's below 500 as a coach. Consistently. Money back to the evaluation, the evaluation process. When you look at your team, are they good enough to, to pull out of this thing and – do they have the personality to pull out of this? Because that seems to be one of the things that's missing, the, the weakness in the personality. Yeah, I certainly think yes. so. Um, the guys in that locker room, um, you know, as we entered the season, uh, a, a tough schedule, and and really even the games we lost, we that's felt like we say. should have won a lot of those. It's so always, anytime I think the, anytime the belief you hear, is there, you your team uh, has both the in the locker room, uh, the, among uh, the rest of our staff, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you Obviously, hear a guy like Tristan Thompson lightly, come out and, and say, we don't need a coach to inspire to us to do just that and things like that, like you got to know uh, facts. these type of questions are going to be asked. Yeah, uh, the only other change to highlight is um, is Rico Hines will move to the front of the bench and uh, we really congrats love, to Rico uh, Hines. The energy Shout that out, Rico, Rico has his connection with players. Uh, he does a fantastic job, I think, as, as you all know, and um, he'll now move to the front of the bench and, and bring that energy from there. When you look at just the, the start that you have, obviously you're not very far into the season. Is it safe to say that Luke had a very short leash if it's, you know, or were there like... Here we go. When you look at this, is it beyond the reason not to see? It, yeah, it's not uh, coming in and, and having any sort of, you know, determination on that. It's, um, you know... I'm with the team all the time in communication with, with Luke, uh, the rest of the coaches, the players, and, um, you know, we're always focused on how can we win the next game. And, but at the same time, my job is to step back and evaluate where we're at and what's the best way to move forward. And, you know, the, this last stretch, like I've said, is, is not where we want to be and, and how can we get, get out of that. And, um, you know, the, the last 60 plus games of the year, get back to what we need to do. And that was, um, the decision that I, that I came to.
of coaching. <laughs> um, so real quick, just just to add this icon bef- before we continue. This this move was really done right after the Raptors game. They just didn't want to do it on, on the back to back. Like it was it was very apparent, and you kind of saw like the vibes of the following. I wasn't there on Saturday, but uh, because this team stresses me out and I have back issues now, it's not because of them, but definitely they stress me out and they stress a lot of Kings fans out. But honestly, this 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 decision was most likely made after the Raptors at loss. Like, it was an embarrassment just to watch them play like that. Yeah, sorry. I'm looking over because I see, I see our buddy James is on Channel 13 after the after the Raider game to talk about how this is 10 coaches in, 15, in this 15-year drought. It's, um, it's, 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 it's just one of those things where it's just wow at this point. You know what I mean? Like, it just had to be uh, – um, Amick said that on Deuce Mo that Monty Williams wanted the Kings job. I mean that doesn't. I mean that would have been awesome to see Monty Williams here. I mean he just took the Suns to the to the championship. But yeah, I I don't know. I think yeah, I I was reading that that Jason Anderson article and it was saying a lot about how Luke Walton felt it was coming. Like he kind of sensed this was coming, and I don't know if that influenced, you know the way the Kings were playing because yeah. Luke, I believe, also came out and said that it does put pressure on his guys to play knowing that every game felt as if they had to play for their coach. And, and again, I, 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 I'm taking it uh, – I'm not saying like verbatim what was written down. All I'm letting you guys know is that in that article, there was multiple times where it stated things like, you know, the Kings players felt like they were under pressure to perform for their coach who they wanted to have his back. But Walton also felt like this was just a matter of time before it actually happened. And again, the the biggest message from it was Vivek Ranadive is the management of all this chaos. Like this, he's, he's the chaos agent. He's the center of all, all right. of it. And again, you guys were talking about it the other day. It, it starts from the top down. And I think this is a... This is a bold move to do this 17 games in when you could have done it at the beginning of the year and during the off season and made this move because now you have all of all, all of us looking at you saying what's next. Yeah, you have a you lot of instability yourself in the matter. Right. It, it, and that's that's what's followed the Kings for so long is that word instability. And and again, another another thing, a question marks on is Gentry going to be the guy for the remainder of the year? Because if that's the case, I mean, he at least he's getting it only 20 games into the season, 17 games into the season. Right. And now I do want to see how do these players respond under a new head coach, knowing that they're in a three-game skid, knowing that the season's still early. Are they able to bounce back? Or It feels like a 10-game skid. It feels like a 10-game skid to me. They only had that (laughs) one win, that one win against the Pistons. They were on, like I believe, a four-game losing streak. One against the Pistons. Now they're on three-game losing streak. And and here's another thing. This was one move. Does this start trickling into other moves? Is this start to become a spiral where, like, you know what? Now it's time. Because I wrote about it because I have a sub stack where I write about things. Uh, you guys check me out, VinceMiracle.substack.com. It, it's a thing where is it going to start making bolder moves for Monty? Does Monty say, okay, if Luke's gone, now i am also got to start making these moves. Maybe it's time to hit a home run. Maybe it's time to offer a Tyrese, Buddy, Bagley, a, and two, two first-round picks to go after a guy like Ben Simmons to build around Fox. What What's next? Right. Because it's still early, and you're only 6-11. and 11. Like That's yeah. the crazy thing. The Kings are only five games out of 500. They, it's still so early in the season where... It's only five games, Vince, but it could spiral out of control real fast. Like, if they lose five more. Especially in these upcoming five more games. These upcoming five games are so rough. And they're so important because if you, hypothetically, you lose all five, you're now 10 games. And it's not very common when the team goes down 10 games and bounces back. But let's continue to uh, to listen to some of the comments. Breaking the news to the team, how was that done? And... um, What's your feeling on how the how the team is actually taking this? Yeah, uh, as always, in communication with our with our players and and around the team, um, I'll keep all the kind of internal 
stuff internal, but yeah, we addressed the team. Uh, I think the guys um, remain confident. We, we all know we have to get out of this, this one in seven, um, you know, stint that we've had, but um, you know, I think there's a belief in that locker room. I have belief in that locker room um, and, and talking with Alvin and the rest of the coaches, they do too. So um, no doubt that we'll, we'll get out of there. And I think the guys, um, you know, are excited for tomorrow. This is the best question here. Hi, Monty. Um, you know, it was, it wasn't too long ago, Not you know, that, that you were saying, Luke Jason was, asked the best you question thought the coach to lead you back to the playoffs and you did make the decision to bring him back. Um, so I guess the question, Thank you. first question would be, you know, why now just 17 games into a season when at, at least part of those 17 games um, you, you were getting some of the results you, you were looking for? Yeah, as I said, that the the start to the year was was a lot of what we were hoping for, and and really um, thought it could have been even better. Um, and I think we saw a lot of the things that um, you know that we thought this team could do. But these last eight games, um, you know, was was a change. And for me, the question became, what's the best way to move forward? And um, you know, that's, that's my job at every point of the season. And after last night, that was the, uh, that was the conclusion. So it's really about, about the future and what we can do. Going forward. So was it in the uh, rational okay. or do irrational? You, do you anticipate any differences in terms of um, the rotation, who's playing, who's not playing um, just with this change and with someone new making those decisions? Yeah, as always, you know, that's the coach's decision. Alvin will make those decisions. I think, we know, like I said, we're not where we want to be. We have 17 guys on the roster. Whoever is going to do the things that um, that Coach Gentry asked them to do and that can win us games is going to be out there playing. So not Bagley. <laughs> Bagley will probably still be in the rotation. I think that that was a top-down move. They want the number two pick on the floor. That's my sense of it. Because why would they stop playing Harkley? Monty, was it? just the losses or was there something beyond the losses is there anything you can speak to as far as a disconnect a tuning out or something that just set alarm bells off for you beyond losing that's a good question i think yeah we um you know it's a results based business um but um you know i think it's it's more of what can we do to get this thing back on track uh i think Offensively, we, we've the last played fast seasons. at times. I want us to play even faster. I think we can be the fastest team in Thank the league you. Um, with De'Aaron, Tyrese, the rest of the guys that we have. Um, defensively, we've we've shown some improvement, but we have to be able to finish possessions. We have to be able to get off the floor uh, on the defensive end and get and get into the to our offense. Um, and we have to finish games. You know, like I said, we were five and four, but felt like we could have even been better. Uh, and then during this one and seven stretch, we had a couple games that we let let slip through. So, um, you know, I think those are things we'll continue to focus on um, and that uh, Alvin will uh, address along with his staff to the players. Uh, Monty, so you got the same team. Your coaching staff is the same other than Luke not being there. Um, Alvin was running the offense. Mike was running the defense. <laughs> what do you anticipate so changing? What What is, you know, what's going to be different now? Yeah, I think for us, um, it's continuing to uh, do the things that got us off to a better start, um, do it more consistently. Uh, you know, I think Alvin will will put his stamp on things a little bit, just just given uh, his experiences. Um, but I, again, I think we have shown that we can do it, and it's it's just doing that more consistently. Okay, so uh, real quick, George Carl, MVP of all of this, the incredible fans of Sacramento deserve better. And I think in one of his quotes, if I'm not, actually, let's not paraphrase. Let's let's see what he said. Gentry is the right next move for the Kings. Players need to play much harder for him. Vivek needs to sell the team. That's a dude who, who you know, doesn't really like Vivek, but there's a lot of merit to what he's saying, man. I mean... Uh, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I, if it wasn't for Vivek, the Kings still wouldn't be here. Facts. So you got to kind of give that give that little. I I I I just feel like there's at at a point where Vivek has to realize he needs to take a step back. I'll be honest. I actually like Monty McNair as the Kings GM. 
I feel like he he kind of has an idea of what he wants to do. He has continuously preached pace, and I love that he addressed that here because being that they are eighth in pace with this type of team and with the starting lineup that they're running, especially when you're running one with Fox and Halliburton, you need to be running at a faster pace. You can't keep slow walking the ball up and doing this one pick and roll, everyone stand in the corner offense. It does yeah. not work. It does not work. Uh, I, I honestly would love to see an offense where it's more like Charlotte's. I feel like that would that's easily replicated with this team, especially when you have a guy like Harrison Barnes that can play the, the Gordon Hayward type of role. I, that's the type of I, offense I would envision. Let Fox be able to move with the ball, give your star player the best way to succeed, which is moving and setting his guys up. The only difference is, is that LaMelo is hitting, knocking down three point shots, but yeah, man, I, I, I think George Carl is right. I think the Kings are now going to just have to have the mindset of let's start proving people wrong because they already had to do it anyways, but yep. at least there wasn't like a target on their back. Now everyone's eyes are on them. You have another coach. You're at another interim. 10 coaches in this 15-year drought without the playoffs. What's next? What do you guys got? Because, or it's time to make a home run. Like, I keep saying, make a home run hit, make a home run hit. Right. I really, I'm really starting to think that this is going to be a trickle-down effect. You're going to let go of that head coach. It's time to take, it's time to go for it. This is, it, 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 there's no more holding back. Let's build. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up the Charlotte Hornets as a, a team that you can look at in terms of offensive scheme, offensive execution. I like that analogy or that example better yet. And I want to kind of touch on defense and obviously the Warriors are the best team right now. And if you have been paying attention to what they've been doing defensively. And when I look at the roster again, just talent wise, I get it. They have Steph Curry, but this is def the reason why they're the best team right now is literally their defense. And when I look at their defenders, yeah, they're good. They're good. But it's how they communicate on defense, how locked in, how much they pay attention to the little details, the meticulous details that make that makes them great, right? But when you compare that in retrospect to what the Kings can do, when you see a guy like De'Aaron Fox, who has all the ability in the world to be a all MB, like like an all-world defender because of his size and and lateral quickness and his side like he's not like a little guy he's like six five and he's a lot stronger and then you start talking about hb and then and then davion mitchell uh rashawn holmes and you're like looney and i'm like there is no reason why the Kings shouldn't be a lot better than what they are defensively just from a schematic standpoint why the hell are they always switching so easily just what the Warriors run, which is a box and one, so it's kind of like a one-two-two, two, right? They, it's, uh, if you look at them from the TV angle, they kind of formulate a box around that court, and they have a guy on ball. There is no reason to believe that the Kings aren't capable of doing the same thing. It's a copycat league, right? I'm yeah, just questioning, like right? I'm just questioning why they haven't done something like that. Or have a true identity where you can pinpoint what the hell they're doing. I get it. Like they're like the Kings switch everything, which again, it's a mistake. They don't have the personnel to actually do that. But in a zone type scheme, it, it would really benefit them because they have a, a hound uh and Davion Mitchell, and they have lateral quickness from two, three, and four. Even and even at the five, like you telling me that Looney's better than Rashawn Holmes? That's what that's what mind that's just mind boggling to me, right? Again, incompetence from the entire coaching staff. Real talk. I mean, the Kings defense has shown at times that it could be solid. That that's what's disappointing is when they need to be locked in, let's say for a they're down by five and they've had the lead, they gave it up, and then they come out of a timeout and they play aggressive defense where they're into you, the rotation is solid. I, I think it's just having a louder voice, a true leader defensively. Like Davion shows by example, but you never really hear him talking. You just see, see him chewing on that gum, you know what yep. I mean? But he's also a rookie. You don't really want to expect that from him. Rashawn, he speaks loudly, but the thing about Rashawn is that he always has to bail out the guards, and then he finds himself in consistent foul trouble, which makes it very frustrating to do that. 
my thing is I agree with you. Maybe the one 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 or the one two one whatever. I, my thing is I think they should do a two three shell. That defense will work completely well for them because then you, you're kind of mixing in man and zone, but you keep yep. the you keep the opposing offense questioning what you're doing. But on top of that, when you have that help in a two three, what's the Kings' biggest problem right now away from their defense? Rebounding. That two three, when you have everyone colliding to the rim, that you you lower the chances of second chance points. You take away the ability of Tristan Thompson falling into a trap where he's set on a one-on-one against threes. And on top of that, you give the ability of a guy like Davion Mitchell to play one-on-one against everyone you need while also just holding down his zone of the area right. of the court. I think a 2-3 zone shell would be the defense that I would go after. But again, I don't think with a guy like Alvin Gentry or anybody on this coaching staff, because the coaching staff is staying the same, you're just losing the, the head of the snake and putting on a new one. I, I don't know if you're going to see a new defense. I think maybe you're going to see a faster pace offense. Yep, again, I agree. I hope I hope that doesn't result in seeing this Kings team taking more three pointers because I don't believe the Kings. After 17 games in, the only shooter that the Kings have is Buddy Heald, and and they said they've been saying it on the telecast. It's been saying it's been seen more and more now. You live by the Buddy, you die by the Buddy because he's the only shooter on the team, right? You live by the shot, you die by the shot. He's the only shooter. Barnes can knock it down. Halliburton can hall it down, uh, knock it down, but he's looking for passes. Yep. Start doing something different where you're getting slashes and off-ball movement because currently right now the offense is unsuccessful. I don't care about the 5-4 and four start. It's unsuccessful. It's not yeah. working. You're 6-11 and 11 now. Jason said it best, though. He said, Gentry ran the offense. Mike ran the defense. What's changed? And it's a fascinating thing moving forward, but let's finish up. The press conference with Monty. Yeah, Doug's been great since coming in. Uh, obviously, former player, former Sacramento King, uh, and his energy and um, you know playing experience has been awesome. He'll continue to be a, a huge part of of our coaching staff, but. Um, you know, Alvin just brings a, a wealth of experience, um, somebody who has seen it all. And um, we felt he was best to lead us going forward the rest of the year. All right, Jason, last one. Monty, one thing that, that always struck me about Luke was that um, he was pretty consistent in his messaging and, and what he wanted from the team, the things he was preaching. Um, but I, I wonder you know, does a, can a voice get stale? And, and was that maybe part of the problem that, that maybe, I think that's what happened, you know, as much as the players spoke up and, and uh, seemed to support him, did you feel like um, maybe the voice uh, wasn't resonating enough with them? Yeah, I appreciate, um, of course, you know, the question and, and Luke and all his efforts, um, you know, here in Sacramento, uh, I think, yeah, it was, it was, like I said, it wasn't any one thing. It was a combination of things, but sitting, sitting here with where we've been at the last two weeks, um, we felt we were getting the consistency uh, and certainly the results we wanted. And, um, you know, this is, like I said, we all need to be better. This is, this is not on any one person, but, um, but we did feel this was the change that was best to get us back to where we needed to get to. Thank you. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh man. Any thoughts on what uh and I and we touched on it earlier, but just for the people that are or that came in late, kinda of touched on that Doug Christie situation or rumors. Yeah, I mean I I'll i I'll, I'll state it again. I just feel like it wasn't gonna be the right plan. I think that was uh hundred percent. It was one. It was. It was just one of those things where it would have been two Kangs, and I felt like that came from a probably a source that was just throwing more logs to a a, a burning dumpster fire, just trying to mm -hmm. deflame it up. I think Gentry was definitely going to be the guy because oh, if they're going to promote a former player to coach, I say it should have been Bobby Jackson, Bobby the Jackson. guy who won your summer league championship, the guy who's running your G League team, the guy who's been on the coaching staff already. That's someone I would I would choose to promote before I would go with Doug Christie, who's only 17 games into his first coaching job. Perfectly said. That just would have been an embarrassment. And it's not a knock on Doug. It's just more of a testament to the hard work that Bobby has put in. He's earned his stripes. He got 
promoted to G League head coach. That would have been the move if they would have went in that direction. But just Doug's name being thrown out there just kind of doesn't surprise you. <laughs> but it's definitely something you this. to go ahead. Let me ask you this because the Doug thing, it, it, it's just a thing. It was, it, like I said, I think it was just more logs to a dumpster fire. Nothing real right. there. Do you think Alvin Gentry is the coach for the remainder of the year? Oh, I personally don't like Gentry as a head coach. I never have. Um, I'm with you. I mean, if I had to guess, I would say yes. A lot of the optimistic Kings fans that are like super optimistic, I would say are hoping for a Hawks type turnaround. He is not Nate McMillan. So please just defensive get, first. get that out of the way. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I, I say yes, but this could be that type of uh, year where there's a coach out there that gets a lot of noise. You start losing more games, and kind of like that George Carl year where you, it was a Corbin that got the interim, and then they 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 fired him. I don't know, just the I don't know the exact timeline, but it was something like that where you promote Corbin and then you bring on George Carl. It could be something like that, but I don't think so. I think he'll last for many in the year. Whether, you know, I don't want to say playoffs because all of our predictions really are out the door right now. You don't know what to think. It's the exact same team. There's no changes. I thought they'd be a lot better. I believe a lot of players that I've spoken to on this team believe they're a lot better. They're better than what the record indicates. That's the belief. That doesn't mean squat because they are 6-11 and 11 and you have to start building game by game and seeing where that takes you. But you're in a, you're in a hole, man. And nothing much has changed. So, and one thing I will say and mention about Luke Walton and just kind of question Kings fans and maybe it's something that y'all can think about is I know for a fact that there are head coaches who it's – and all be all with them, whatever they say goes. But then there are other head coaches like Luke Walton, who was super receptive to his coaching staff and is always accepting and, and receptive to ideas, terminologies of how to implement to help the team win games. So to the people that are like, oh, we hire, hire and, and this isn't a slack to Bobby or Doug. Oh, Bobby, Doug, whoever. Just promote them. And I always question, like, well, what's going to change? Like, they've had their chance to voice their opinions. Like, are they keeping this? You know what I'm saying? Like, are, are they keeping secrets until they, be, uh, until they become a coach? No, it doesn't work that way. So that's why I laugh at, at those notions of, well, just hire this guy. Like, like no, it's, it's the exact same dudes who's been on this exact same team for years and they have had their input. Whether or not it's been executed is a whole, it, it's a separate thing. But Bobby Jackson is literally running the exact same system in Stockton. Can he call different actions? Absolutely. Like that's part of being the head coach, but the system is the same. So you kind of want to keep that system the same either way because if you want to bring up, say, a guy like King to the Kings, uh, he needs to know what the system is. So that's the whole point of having a G League team like that. And I just want to throw out throw that throw that out there for Kings fans to think about. Like, do you honestly think guys keep these innovative ideas a secret? The answer is no. But I'll let you guys answer that. Do you have any thoughts to that? No, I mean it, it, it. I, I'm just I, I just think it's time to figure out what is it that you're trying to build. That's my big thing is are you trying to be a defensive team? Are you trying to be a fast paced type of team? Are you, are you trying to be a defensive fast team that, sh that moves up and down the court well? Or do you want to be a three point shooting type of team? Because in my mind, I feel like ever since Vivek has came to Sacramento, it's always been I want to I want to have a Warriors. That's why you saw drafts picks like Nick Stauskas, always wanting guys like Buddy Heald. You know, Marvin Bagley can play a, a Draymond Green or a four, three through five type of situation, right? Like these were narratives that they were trying to promote. 
at this point, know what your roster is. You have a up and down speed like Darren Fox. You have a smart player like Halliburton. Let them control a real offense, not one move pick and rolls. And I think that's what you have to start viewing when you're going into this next coach. If you want something different, and and this is going to be one that I know a lot of you guys are not going to agree with me. And Leo, I have a feeling you are going to really disagree with me on this. But I think this team wants to run up and down, and really they truly only care about offense. I think defense, they believe it's just purely effort, which there's some there's some credit to that, but there are real defensive players. Just look at Davion Mitchell, right? Yeah. And I, I, I you know me. I believe defense wins championships. You know me. I think defense should be the thing that should should be top priority because effort and defense can result to easy buckets on the other end. But this Kings team is going to love their offense. They, they, I think they really believe in that. I think they should go after a guy like Scott Brooks. Assistant over there with Portland. He just runs different types of offensive sets. I mean, his rotations are questionable, but I, he knows how to work with a guy that's a fast-paced point guard. He I'll did pass. it with Russell Westbrook. <laughs> I told you, I'll you're pass. not going to like it. I'll pass. I'm just, you, have to, you have to just think what's available, though. I mean, there's not much available. I know you're probably going to say a guy like Dan Tony, but do you really That's think he's going to – I know. But do you really think a guy of his age – Kenny Atkinson really, has, has has proven to take over. And this team ain't young, so I I, I don't want to put this narrative. Oh, this team is – like no, this team is no longer young, but it's still like a – middle-aged team it's it's not an old team by any means but I, I think kenny could be there and if they really want to start fresh and give a guy his chance which would require a lot of moolah it's juan howard yeah that, that would be interesting i would not mind that you would get a lot of eyes on you too to, to, in his support yep. uh you see the chat saying you got you see the chat saying mark jackson no thanks. Uh, uh, let's address uh, Tuzon's comment, which has a lot of merit to it. He said, "Know why the Warriors are so good defensively? It's because they have wing guys that can guard multiple positions, where they can just switch everything. Kings got too many guards and not enough wings." Well, I kind of agree and disagree, only because my biggest thing with the Warriors is that when you have a leader like a Draymond Green, who is just an elite talker, an elite communicator. That changes a lot because they're able to hide. And again, not to say that Curry is awful defensively. I think he's average now. He's not a minus anymore. But still, if you're able to hide a guy like that, and then you look at guys like Fox, like and even Tyrese, who are like younger, more explosive, better athletes, smart kids, why couldn't you replicate something similar to that and have that type of success? That's my question. But yeah, it's 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 true. Like they have more wings and Iggy, uh, Wiggins, and obviously Draymond and uh, Tuscom. My he's my Mexican brother. Uh, Kuminga, Kuminga. But um, again, it's Kuminga's young. But I understand yeah, he's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Like I get what he's saying, but at the same time, like the Kings have the talent and the athleticism now. Believe it or not to run that exact scheme and succeed at it. Or like you said, a 2-3 uh, show wouldn't be bad either. Like if Looney is your starter, bro, you telling me the Warriors wouldn't replace Looney with Rashawn Holmes? Come on, man. I'm just, like that's, I mean, that, they're gonna, that's They're that's going to replace him with James Wiseman. I think the, the thing that that's different, well, yeah, you're right, is they have wings. But the big thing for me is that they, they hold everyone accountable on Thank defense. Thank you. Culturally, Draymond speaking. Green. Draymond Green is so loud. He is like just watch them when a defensive possession goes bad. Watch them when a defensive possession goes bad. That's why they're good on defense. It's not because they have all. I mean, yeah, that that helps. Obviously, it helps to have that type of talent and that type of size to play each position. But the accountability that the leaders of this team put on them because this person got beat or because you didn't name out that switch or you didn't name out that screen is so vocal that you can hear it on TV. That's why their defense is good as well. Like that is a, that that's, that's a culture and that's something that needs to be brought in. And again, I think Davion is, would be a huge plus uh, if you put him in a two, three, cause he can lock down 
almost anyone in any size. I, and again, he's small, so I, it's smaller than you'd want him to be ideally because he is a guard. And again, it's always benefit to have that size and that length, but the Kings don't have it. So uh, I, I think a, 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 a shell two, three, it would be my ideal obstacle. But there's some great names that are coming out in the chat. I saw Kevin McHale as an interesting one he's no, a thanks. he's he's interesting <laughs> i don't mind kevin McHale. he runs a lot of I, i'm trying to think of people that would be a I, i'm just trying to think of people that they would that would accommodate the kings and what they're trying to do because if the, you got to think like if the kings are really caring about their offense you're at least going to want someone that yeah you know, someone said who that <laughs> You're gonna hit your <laughs> who the F is the Seabass guy? That's Vince's biggest <laughs> fan. Stop it. That's <laughs> my hey, shout out support. I, lo- I love Alpha supporters. Hey, shout out, bro. Uh, <laughs> okay, so again, we're accepting calls. Brooks. So so I put the link in the bio if you guys want to call in, pop on the screen, get some uh air time on. But yeah, man, I appreciate everybody that's watching. If we got 55 people watching, make sure you guys uh hit the like or dislike. We gotta have 50 likes to then push this in algorithm that really helps a lot man and this will be available on itunes and spotify and wherever you get your podcast right after this ends but yeah links in the bio if you, if you want to call in i think we've covered all our bases for the most part um now it's time to hear you guys to voice your opinions but go ahead vince until you until we get somebody on yeah I, like i said I, th- I, th- I just think scott brooks has shown that he can work with a fast point guard he knows how to make sets with more than just a pick and roll because of it if they want to play small and they want to play this guard type of lineup, it's time to do something like that. I, I, again, the ideal offense for me for this type of team would be a, a, a team like Charlotte. I would try and replicate that the best way I could. They run guards at their spot. I think Harrison Barnes can do a good – is on the same level as a Gordon Hayward is right now. Miles Bridges, again, that's just – Miles Bridges is really good. He, he's having a breakout year this year, but – I don't know. I, I just feel like the Kings talent wise match up so well against that team. Didn't they just beat them recently as well? So, I mean, ah, man, I, 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 I think Scott Brooks is an option. Obviously I know you, you're, you're in love with Dan Tony. Kevin McHale is interesting. There, there's guys out there. I don't, I'll be honest. I'm not a huge fan of the Mark Jackson idea. No. It's too, that's too, I mean, maybe the inspirational speeches will be good, but I've heard, I've heard that that can get kind of exhausting. Yes, it can. And it did. <laughs> and it did, which is the reason why it's but not I think like. I see a lot more Bagley. To, I hope question. not. Like, if we see a lot more Bagley, the Kings are going backwards. Real talk. Like, if we see more Bagley, that's just an instant knock negative. On Alvin Gentry, and and I'll be very, very, very loud about that. Very loud. I don't understand how Mo Harkless went from being your starter to being completely out of the rotation since you brought him in there to be your defender. That's why he was there. Now I get it. I think Monty or Monty. I think Har- Mo Harkless is a good is a decent defender. He's he's a good defender. Let's let's just put it. He's a good defender. He's just such a negative defensively, and. Metu has been good as a starter. I like Metu as the starter. He brings energy. That's one thing this Kings team always needs is that type of energy, uh, especially at that four spot. And he's not afraid to shoot the ball where I feel like Harkless is always not really looking to shoot the ball as much as he should. But how does he completely get out of your rotation now when you're preaching defense? And, again, I think this came down to a thing where – we heard about it again. I'm gonna keep bringing up this Jason Anderson piece. I recommend you guys go read it in a second. <laughs> Mark Jackson but, thinks Alfred Payton is good. <laughs> but uh, you guys, you might you might see the family mm. walk by. They just got home from getting the sun. But oh good. Man, I I I think uh, I don't know. I I just think that Marvin Bagley is going to start being on the court a lot more. I think that they know what the number two pick is. They want to see. They want to try and see if his trade value goes up. They want a last chance to see what they have in him. And I think that's why you saw Harkless fall completely out of the rotation. And if we're going to start changing things up, can we stop playing Tristan Thompson and only start playing Damian Jones? I think Thank Jones you. is energy on the court Thank and what you. he did last season for this team and how he not only jumps his whole body in for a rebound, he kind of reminds me of like a younger Drummond, how he used to jump in for rebounds with mm-hmm. his big body, but he's 
brave enough to do it defensively. Obviously, he's not that quick. But, I mean, with Tristan Thompson, defensively, he's been gone. They, they, they're, he's nothing is there. He doesn't even do the hard foul. He tries. He literally thinks he can just stand there and go up, and he's going to get a stop. He's never been that player. No matter where he's been, he's never been the I'm going to jump in front of you, jump high type of player. He's been the swat it down, and he's not even doing that well. So I'm ready to see more Jones. I, you, need, you need to try something different, but to go completely away from your starter. He went from being a starter on this team, Mo Harkless, to being no one, and he's arguably your third, fourth best defender. Put him on the court. Put him on the court. Yeah, if you guys want to call in again, the link is in the bio. Just click on that link, and we will get you guys. You don't have to tell your face. You can. I highly recommend it. It's a cool way to interact. But the guest.ecam live link is available in the comments. All you got to do is just click. That is super easy. Uh, Devin says, why not Alex Len? I like Len, but I'm with Vince. They should be playing Damian Jones a lot more. I like what he provides in terms of the versatility, the rebounding. And he showed signs last year, even laterally in the pick and roll, to be a lot more competent than we give him credit for or can say about guys like Len and TT. So I like the idea of just allowing him to get that chance because he's worked hard for that opportunity, same as Metu. Now, again, Metu to me is the first or second guy off your bench because he provides that scoring, that energy that you need, but not on need, this team, not not on this on team this because team. he is not forced to start because, again, they don't have five legitimate – well, they have six really good players, but it's just positionally like you want a bigger stretch four like him at that size to actually be a starter. Now, does he have the upside to be a starter down the road? I do believe that. But as of today, 2021, November 21st, 4.42 p.m., no. Like, if he's your starter, you're not that good. And I say that with with a lot of respect because I'm the biggest Metu fan. And, I, and I've been pulling for Metu for a long And I've been telling you Metu's better than Bagley for a while now. So I just don't believe right now, November 21st, that he's a starter. And if you look across the league... Name me the teams he would start on, and that's how you start really gauging your own team's talent from top to bottom. So that that's that's what you got to do. It like uh, Gentry is not much better. He did not do much for New Orleans. That's why I'm we'll not a big fan that, of him. Yeah, agree. that's why I'm not a big agree. fan of him. Agreed there. Go look back. Uh, Go look back. Uh, Go look back. Yep, on, agree on with the Warriors' about. culture. Draymond's leadership are reasons why they are good defensively, but that three guard lineup looks been playing, in my opinion, is why our pick and roll defense sucks so bad, so bad, so mm. bad. Let me, let me add another one too. So bad, oh horrible. Their pick and roll defense is so bad that it doesn't matter who's in the pick and roll. Bialica was in that pick and roll, and he was yeah, bullying was. him down there. Yeah, he was. I mean, shout out to Bialica; he's been playing so good this year for that for that boy. Warriors. Team. That's my boy. Man. That's that's like my boy. Shout out boy. to Bialica. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, to the Alex Len question, I really don't even mind if they swap Alex Len and Jones. I'm just saying Tristan right. Thompson shouldn't be in the rotation anymore. And I, that that that's just that's just my personal opinion. I think he is. He has not been good every time he's been on the court. He, he was brought in there for offensive rebounds. Doesn't really get that. Uh, defensive rebounding, I feel like he gives up a ton. He he, he gives the opposing teams uh, more second chances. I, I don't know. Again, I think I think it's just going to be more Bagley. I think you're going to see a lot more Bagley, whether you guys like it or not. I think Bagley's going to get his opportunity. And this is why I was, I was stating it earlier. I never thought Bagley was going to be completely out of the team's rotation. To start the year, I I just thought it was he a should. horrible idea to have. I never. I just always thought it was a horrible idea to have another reason of an outside source away from you yourself and Marvin to come out and say what your issues were. And on top of that, just airing it out alone, it should have been an issue in your own stupidity. Mind, but, yeah, that's that, that's a right, separate but, issue, and, and it's it's a it's a question to Johnny Larson who says, "What is your issue with Bagley? A locker room or floor?" Uh, the answer is uh, both. Floor. Leo or Rock. Leo, I am going to get you in. 
Give me a sec real quick. Let me see. For me, guess. it's for me it's more floor than it is locker room. To answer your question, Johnny, I mean, from everything that I've heard around the Bagley, he's always he's always been still working. What's up, Leo? Like so mainly just floor. What's up, sir? How you doing? Good, brother. What you want to talk get, about? Good. I'm just curious. Why do you want Mike D'Antoni so bad? Mike D'Antoni is awesome. a pr- okay. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll I'll answer real quick and just to give you a quick uh, answer. Mike D'Antoni is one of the greatest coaches to ever live. He will never get credit mm-hmm. for being one of those guys because well he fell short twice, but he's the only head coach to ever take the greatest team assembled in the Golden State Warriors. He was a game away from that, and the point guard who got injured. Uh, he just wins games, period. And he gets the best out of his point guards, and he has a track record of his point guards becoming MVPs under his offensive scheme. So I believe De'Aaron Fox would benefit the most from a guy like right. Dan Tony. but that's the quick answer. Go ahead. Okay, I just – what about everybody else on the roster? Because uh, Mitchell won't fit. Mike Daytona system at all because he's not really a offensive guy. And same thing with Haber and his offensively he's kind of average type. Like he's good but he's mostly average. He's not really aggressive. And not really a shooter. And Mike Daytona loves shooters. So I yeah. don't know how they would fit on that. And Mike Daytona think... he's a great coach offensively. Right. But defensively I don't know. Well the point right now is honestly to make the playoffs and to build progressively from there. And if De'Aaron mm-hmm. Fox, hypothetically speaking, just say he does help him elevate to that superstar level, the rest oh, will yeah, take care of it. Like, like the rest will take I'm, care of itself because then the dominoes will start falling. Okay, well, I want to go play with De'Aaron Fox. But until that happens... Nobody wants to play in Sacramento because, again, as right. uh, Vince has alluded to, he's a Robin right now. Let's be honest. Yes. But I appreciate yeah, I you, Leo, for, for calling in. Make sure you make that more of a of a common thing, man. I appreciate the love and support. Take care. All right, you too. Great call there. I know Buddha was calling or somebody else was calling. Make sure you guys call in again. The link is in the bio. Go ahead, Vince. Uh, I just want to address some of the things in the chat. So Jesse nine one six says Bagley is just a kid. Now, now look, man, I'm not, I'm not hating on him in terms of him as the person. It's more of just the professionalism. And, and like I said, I never, I my biggest problem with Bagley is never with off court stuff. Away from the fact that he has other people than himself, whether it be his dad or his agent, speaking up for him about the problems. Where this should be that type of stuff has always been known and and me as a person that works as well i try to keep any problems in house i don't want to tell any of our partners out there that we're having issues or that they're arguing or i'm mad about minutes you know that that's something that you keep in house and you should kind of know that as a professional especially in the nba that's number one but two his on court play has never really shown much right i mean i get that his rebounding numbers are there but look tristan thompson's rebounding numbers were there but look how we're seeing it now here in sacramento Uh, on top of that his defense is so bad that every time he's on the court, a pick and roll is so that a guard can get him in a one-on-one situation. And again, maybe that's solved by going into a zone. And I, I'll keep preaching that I believe that's that's my best idea for it is for this team to go into a two-three shell type of zone. But that's something that can only be said until it's seen. That's not that's nothing that I could. It, actually say it's going to happen right like this is just my mindset of what what i'm seeing but uh, just to address uh robert or roberto michael fox will never be an elite john morant is what we thought fox could be but that's not happening i want you to do some history or some some history some research and tell me when steve nash became an mvp level type player some and i and i'm reading the comment (laughs) <laughs> and uh yeah it takes some time bro like uh, robert it takes some time man so and 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 the thing is fox has the talent man he has the ability to be that type of player whether or not he has it mentally is a separate conversation if we're talking strict talent 
I believe he has it, which is why I've been so adamant on him one day becoming that guy. And look, I could be wrong. And right now, he's proven me in being wrong. Like, I'm not going to shy away from that either. I I know what I've said about Darren Fox. I just believe in his bold. ability. You've been bold. You've been I just bold. believe in his ability. But I can't be right 100% of the time. Sheesh. <laughs> I mean, I've been right a lot. But, I mean, this could be one of those times <laughs> where I've been wrong. And that's okay. And I say that with... With like Yo, you just, lots you, of laughing emojis, such, <laughs> bro. You gave uh, don't, don't be offended by what I'm about to say, but you gave such a Trump answer, bro. I, I swear, <laughs> Trump came out one time. He was like, "Look, I could be wrong, but I've been right a lot." That's that's basically what you just said, bro. <laughs> oh man, that's that was funny. Um, uh, it looks like Leo's camera. Camera, hey, bro, if you can hear me, you're 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 phoning out. But we'll we'll keep the conversation rolling and going. Um, uh, I want to talk about this tweet. This tweet had me smiling for some positive positivity. This is from Iwi Tuizon, Alvin Gentry in the 09 2010 season with the Suns. He went 54 and 28, and then he went 48 and 34 with the Pels in 17 18. Just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, yeah, so I thought that was that that was that's some good positivity. I like to look back though on how that team was ran and just remembering how much of a headache his rotations were. For me, I I, I still think Scotty Brooks is going to be my best option, just in terms of how I envision the Kings want to play, right? And the question that I saw earlier, what's your ideal Marvin Bagley trade? My ideal Marvin Bagley trade is going to be packaged with something else. It's going to be packaged together with any Buddy Healed, maybe some picks. And in my personal opinion, it, it should be going after either a Ben Simmons or a Pascal Siakam. I think that's that would be the ideal trade is a he, a, a, a home run, heavy hitting, swing for the fences trade. And I and I wrote about it again, VinceMiracle.substack.com. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at VM Center. <laughs> Shout out to Valley Tires and Medici Sacramento. I, I tweeted about it earlier. I, I think that the the trade should be a home run, Tyrese Halliburton, a disgruntled shooter and Buddy Heald, and a frustrated former number two pick in Marvin Bagley with two first round picks, one of them being lottery protected. And you go and you offer that to for Ben Simmons, and you you see if you can get like a Cork Maz or a Shake Milton type of player in return. I think that is what you should be going after. I think that's the type of home run it should be. Again, if you didn't hear it, I think it should be Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, Marvin Bagley, and two first round picks, probably with a protection preferably with a protection on one of those picks that is lottery protected and you go after a guy like Ben Simmons. That is my ideal trade in my mind. So what do you guys think? What do you guys ideal trades? Another one that I really like as, as Leo's getting his camera fixed and back up. Another trade that I like is one that he, that Leo made, which is going after a guy in Jeremy Grant who is leading his Pistons team to a 93 to 78 lead over this Lakers roster right now. Like I wouldn't mind uh, Marvin Bagley, Buddy Heald and Two first round picks for Jeremy Grant. Because then it's that lineup that you guys wanted to hear about having wings, and the Kings can run that type of defensive set. But again, with defense, it's all about culture and having leaders in there that are going to make you accountable on every single possession. I'm back. Welcome can you back. hear me? <laughs> so the camera back. died. So when the camera dies, the audio dies, and uh, I just swap batteries. Both my batteries are dead. So th this could die any any moment as well. Uh, I got to charge them. <laughs> Uh, so I know people have been trying to call in cause I, cause I heard Vin still talk to my headphones. And I heard the little, de -de 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 little, little ringy sound that <laughs> somebody wants to come in. Uh, great stuff, Vince, by the way. Thank you. Uh, so within the next five minutes, we'll, we'll end this. So if you do want to get a quick comment in here, please do so. The link's in the bio and I apologize to the people who have tried to call in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Vince and I will be doing some breakdowns. Vince will be taking care of a lot of the fantasy basketball gambling because uh, we're gambling addicts. And, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll be giving you guys some picks. He, he, he'll he get used to 
uh, pretty much working with Ecamm Live uh, in the very near future. Um, very near. Yeah, very like, near. like very near. On this channel, we, again, like the brand promise of Basketball Zone is to provide in-depth analysis on the NBA by using film, scheme, and data rather than narratives. That's what we believe in. And that, and you guys have to hold us accountable to those standards. So if we're not providing very good analysis, then we're not doing our jobs. And we're not keeping our, our, our brand promise, our channel promise. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Turn on your notifications for Basketball Zone. Because, we, you know, we had to rename this channel because the Kings are just awful, right? Like, we can't keep depending on them to be good. So... We're getting fans from different markets now that do appreciate film breakdowns. And I know it's never been like a favorite type of thing here in Sacramento. It's not really like the niche here. But hopefully with time, you know, more fans start to buy into that type of content, which is more about the process and not the result, um, which a lot of fans do like. So Buddha, real quick. What's up, my brother? What's up, bro? Buddha, how you doing? How you doing, man? Oh, just another great, day, man. man. Sunday. It's just a Sunday. Uh, Lou got fired. Went to church. Feel good. Right. Hey, what bless a, up, what man. A, what, a a <laughs> what a trio. What a combination. <laughs> Not that one had to do with it. Like, literally, like, they're separate things. Like, I go to church regardless. But definitely... Church is nice today. That's all I'm gonna say. And yeah, but, again, but the way, but the way you said the it, way it sounded, Luke yeah, got fired, had to go I had to, to replay that in my head. I had to replay that in my head. I apologize. Hit the dislike if you dislike that comment. I don't blame you, man. That was like a weird coincidence. But uh, if y'all know That's anything so about funny. me, uh, I I love church and I love God. So go ahead, Buddha. Hey, bro. I feel you on that. Keep God first. You'll be alright. Yes, but, sir. Uh, yeah, basically, I'm glad that we get to hear a new voice now, man, because Luke's voice, it wasn't getting a job done. So we got Philly tomorrow, so we're going to see what Alvin can do. You got to can't hate on him. Can't be like, oh, mm -hmm. maybe we will sign somebody else or something right now. Let's just let's take it a game, a game at a time, a day at a time, a practice at a time and see what we can do for him. And like you said, uh, we don't know if a trade going to come, so you got to work on what you got right now. And what I think uh, y'all was talking about earlier, y'all was saying Damon Jones in the lineup instead of uh, instead of like Trista Thompson. And I also right. think uh, he should be in a, he should be in the lineup instead of Lynn too, because uh, the main problem that we was having we was going like back and forth with uh, Thompson and Lynn, and basically we was doing that because uh Lynn he would guard like the bigger centers and then Thompson he would guard like the quicker centers i think that Damon Jones he you don't have to like rotate because Damon Jones he can do both cuz like uh against Toronto the uh the other night uh it was a couple times where i seen uh Damon Jones switch on players like Pascal Siakam and stuff like that so like if he can stay in front of Pascal like it's not too many bigs that he can't stay in front of and then and then, like, when uh, Fox and, uh, say, like, Tyrese is driving, he's, like, an extra because when you throw the oops <laughs> on him, you got to worry about it. You definitely got to worry about that. I was just, well, hold up. But I was just laughing because DB said, bro, there's no way Leo just said it. he's been right a lot of the time. Life my ass off. <laughs> you were right. So, first of all, if y'all know me, I'm a jokester. That was a joke. That's why I said laughing emojis right after that. But, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Buddha. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. That was yeah, that's what I said earlier. I'm my like, God. You get I, I don't like I said. You gave a Trump answer. You're like, I'm, I'm like I could be wrong, but I've been right a lot. I've been right. Uh, yeah, I, I I felt like Trump, like an idiot in, in that situation. Again, not not to say not to ruins uh you know different political parties. But yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, man. But yeah, like I said, uh, Damon Jones, he was switching off on players like Pascal, so it's not too many other uh, players that he can't switch on. That's a big. So yeah, I definitely think he should get more minutes. And then uh, when Fox or somebody like that is driving, uh, it's a different option that you got to think about because you're going to get uh, get it put on your head if you don't worry about Damon Jones. So you can't always focus on Fox and uh, Tyrese. So yeah, I mean, that's just my little five cents or whatever. It's not, it's not going to solve everything, but I just right. feel like that it's a uh, 
it's a little something something because it's better. I love your optimism, than Buddha, than and 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 that's why I love you, man. That's why I got love for you because you always bring that optimism, that positivity to the show. So shout out to you, man. I appreciate you for always uh, commenting and just interacting with the live conversations, man. That that that, that means a lot to us, brother. So hey, happy right. Sunday, my man. For sure, love the channel too, man. Love love right, you guys bro. too, man. Enjoy yourself, man. Yes, sir. Shout out to you, brother. Uh, yeah, great stuff there, Josh. Jonah, sorry, Jonah uh, Danley says Fox gets his points when the game is already out of reach. Classic Fox. He's been doing it all season. He'll get nine the whole game, and then when the game is over, he starts to crank it up. That's not true. I I call a cap on that. Like. That's not true. <laughs> so, it's that's not, not full true. cap. It's not full cap, but at the same that, time, that's not. I true. mean, he he's in the game though. Like, I mean, he he's working as hard as to get get to those spots. I I, I think a lot of it has to do with the offense. I, I, again, yeah. The hate the hate on Fox. The hate on Fox is understandable. I've always assumed that he he I I've been one of those people that have been pretty out loud that I don't think he is that number one guy. I don't think he's the guy. I don't think he's the guy that that transcends this team, but he is the best player on this team. So he is the franchise centerpiece. So if you're building around him, you need to make it to where the offense is fit to his play style, which last year was about playing fast, but you don't have the shooters to go with that this season. We thought we did, right? We thought Terrence Davis was going to be a shooter because of what he showed at bits and pieces last season. It hasn't been that. Harrison Barnes has been the best, most all-around player, but I still don't view him as like, a top tier shooter. The only shooter that you have is Buddy. You live by the Buddy, you die by the Buddy. It's time right. to go for a home run, man. If you need to figure out what you're building here, and that's and again, I'm at this point, I'm just continuously repeating myself on that. But it's time to find a leader. It's time to find what else to build around. I think Fox is a true building piece, and anyone that thinks that that's not true, I mean, what what else would you be looking for other than maybe him? His, if he was a shooter. You would be in love with him, but that does it. Same right. thing with Ben Simmons. If he was a shooter, he'd be uh, he'd be LeBron James, right? But you right. still want him on this team. You still want him on this team right now, as is. One hundred percent. I'm on that same. I think you want a team with talent going and making a home run deal to get Ben Simmons, and if that means including a trade with Tyrese Halliburton or Davion Mitchell, Buddy Hield, Bagley, and two first, I think it's time to start swinging. Yep. And I think this type of move of moving on from Walton can trickle into more things happening down the road. That's just my opinion, though. No source on Right. That. And then Edward says or makes a great comment. I think Fox just needs to step up and hold himself to a higher standard. Why? Because he has a talent to improve, but for whatever reason, he is not. And, again, I, I am pro Fox. I'm not going to lie. But the I'm last – yeah, like the last two shows, I've been very critical of his post-game – nonchalant demeanor that's a real thing uh i can't defend what he was doing right where he just he was just like again you have to when you get paid as the guy when you're the face of the organization face of the franchise even if it's not your in your personality to be that guy you have to act like it or at least fake it until you make it and at least act like you care because the way that resonates with fans is like, he don't give a you-know-what. And that's a huge problem on so many levels. I can't defend that. Like, there's no way I can be like, well, uh, like, no. I can't defend that because that's unacceptable. And, you know, I haven't spoken to him about that. I was talking to his agent, though, the other day uh, about how he has gotten a lot of, cri a lot of unfair overreactions. That I do believe, and I made his agent really understand that. But his whole demeanor in post games, that's just a bad look, man. I can't defend that. I, honestly, I, I, look, I can't. His, uh, his leadership has been questionable from a lot from a lot of rumblings, right? Like they, he just yeah. not, he's not vocal. And again, yeah. that's just not, I know Tristan Thompson is trying to be that vocal guy with the with he the can't be that, that guy. He he, he's not good, but. He's not good. It's not even that he's not good. Like right, it's just no, that it, like mean, Udonis, ha Udonis Hamlin is a voice in that that. He yeah, but that, room, but, but, but that, but that, but but he right? culture is established though. Right, but what I'm saying is, is that it doesn't matter if you're in the rotation or not. It's just the type of voice that you're getting. Tristan Thompson isn't a guy that you're going to listen to where it's his first year here in Sacramento, and then he goes out and produces in a way where he's constantly getting beat, and then still saying. 
oh, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. That's like that's like the guy on the court that's chucking up three pointers that keeps and he's bricking everything and he's still clapping at you and mad at you because you didn't give him the ball. Like, bro, no, stop. Well, it, it it's it, again top down. The number one guy needs to be the number one voice, and everyone needs to take accountability. And again, everyone's going to start bringing up the Davion thing every time I talk about <laughs> stuff like this. But Davion just isn't the. Hold up, bro. This is crazy. Defense. He said if Gentry starts his post game conference with give the other team credit, I will become a Warriors fan. That's from RP. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what <laughs> Oh, he's very – RP ain't lying. <laughs> RP that, ain't that's lying. something he will say, though. That's something he's going to oh, say. Sh- I, oh. he'll, he'll be like, man, we came out, we worked hard, but <laughs> give the other team credit, man. They came out. We just lost a fan, today. bro. We just lost a fan, then, because if he's going to say that. Um, no, he's also- for sure. He's for sure. He's for sure going to say it. That's something that's so, – <laughs> that's an Alvin Gentry, Doc Rivers type of saying where they, look, the team played good. Our, yeah. the, our guys were trying really hard, but <laughs> – Give the other team credit. They play great defense on us tonight. Yeah. Like, quick uh, uh quick it- quick shout out to Iwe uh Tuzani. It's glad to be on here, fellas. I'm a Kings fan from the Bay. Obviously, I don't get to talk Kings basketball to anybody here, including my family. LOL. We'll turn things around. Gotta believe. Love the optimism, man. Shout out for the support. Uh, I haven't seen you on uh, ever really, but hey man. If, if you're new to the platform, welcome. We love to interact with everybody. So make sure y'all, you, you tell your fa- or your very few friends that are Kings fans or just NBA fans to tune in. Because we got a lot of Warriors coverage coming. And I ain't going to lie to you guys. Just full disclosure, you're going to see some Warriors content because that gets views. So I'm, I'm just putting that out there. Uh, shout out to you, bro. Ewe, you know what I mean? Uh, just know that we're definitely going to turn it around at some point, right? Hopefully, we'll see Sacramento do it. The Kings do it. Uh, but they can't really go much further down to where they are already now. So, there's only one direction they can go. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get there. Hopefully, we'll get Vince, there. Vince, technically, they can't get worse. <laughs> I mean, we can go back to going back to uh, we can go back to like a Marcus Thornton. Oh, geez, that, no. that, that team, that type of team. I don't know. Um, I don't lots of good stuff from people in the comments. Hey, man, any uh, final thoughts, Vince, before we end this? Trying to go to dinner real quick with the wifey and, uh, yeah. you know, enjoy the rest of our Sundays. But I appreciate everybody who has tuned in. Yeah, uh, my final thoughts, my final comments here is, uh, you know, let's see how this Kings team responds. We definitely need to start seeing Fox become the leader. Everyone needs to take accountability. But I, I would say to everyone, know that you might not see much change right alvin gentry has already been on this staff he's already been a voice in this locker room not much is really going to be expected to change in my mind and um i if they're going to start playing fast i i hope it results in wins but like i said i i I think temper expectations in terms of change there's not a lot of practice in a regular season and uh hopefully we get to see either a bigger move down the way or this team turn it around. <laughs> Devin says, please don't say that, Leo. Chargers versus uh, Steelers coming up. That should be a nice game. The Raiders just broke my heart again. Kings fan, uh, Kings broke my heart. What did I do, man, to, to deserve such bad teams to root for? I don't get it, man. I don't get it, but hey, area. we appreciate it. <laughs> we appreciate everybody. Robert says go Niners. Hey, man. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Go enjoy your family. And uh, yeah, man. Thank you guys. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>